in a town shaped by the subtle machinations and political intrigue of its guilds, it's reassuring to see a goblin waving his torch and screaming about some nonsense or other. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Hey gang, and welcome to my second extra video for December to celebrate the holidays. In today's game, I'm playing Misform Ultimus, Keeping an Island, Cyclonic Rift, Sword of Light and Shadow, Shapesharer, and Phantasmal Image. New to the channel is Brendan playing his Yurik deck, keeping a Mystic Remora, Birds of Paradise, Sunken Hollow, Snow-Covered Island, Overgrown Tomb, Twilight Mire, and a Snow-Covered Forest. Mark is playing his Kyrick deck, keeping a Mortuary Mire, Three Swamps, Hedonist Trove, and Infernal Darkness. Last but not least, Derek is playing his Mogus deck, keeping Two Mountains, Smoldering Marsh, Read the Bones, Vampiric Tutor, and Massacre Worm. I win the die roll and start us off. I play an island and pass. Mark plays a swamp. Brendan plays a snow-covered island and pays the one for Mystic Remora. Derek plays a mountain. I play an island. Mark plays a swamp. Brendan is sad that no one's cast anything and pays the upkeep cost for his Remora. He then plays a snow-covered forest and casts Birds of Paradise. Derek plays a mountain and passes. I have no island for turn and cast Phantasmal Image as a copy of Birds of Paradise because I'm that desperate to stay on curve. Mark plays a swamp and passes. Brendan pays the two for his Remora, still not having drawn a card from it, and he plays a tapped overgrown tomb. Derek plays a smothering marsh and uses Vampiric Tutor in his main phase, breaking the Mystic Remora pack that everyone else had made which lets Brendan draw a card, as he loses two life and goes to tutor for a card. I play a Griffin Canyon and pay three for a Mara Regery before passing a Mark. Mark plays a Swamp and pays four mana and pays six life to the Phyrexian mana cost to cast his commander in his main phase. Brendan untaps and lets the Remora go to his yard. He plays an untapped Sunken Hollow for turn before paying all of his mana for his commander. Derek draws and plays a Soul Ring, and then taps out for Mogus. I take two of my upkeep to the Mogus trigger, and draw for turn. I play a Seed of the Synod, and then pay four for Mistform Ultimus. With my commander on the stack, I get to tap or untap a permanent because of the Regery trigger, and I untap a land. I then resolve a Shapesharer, who is also technically a Merfolk, which has the Regery untap another land, and I pass to Mark. Mark loses 2 life to the Mogus trigger and plays a Swamp for his land for turn, before paying 4 life and 2 colorless to help cast Infernal Darkness. This gives Kyrick a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and he pays another 4 life and 3 colorless this time for a Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. This gives Kyrick a second plus 1 plus 1 counter, and it enters, draining the table for 7, while Mark gains 21. He then passes turn. Brendan loses 2 life to Mogus as well, before playing a Twilight Mire. The Infernal Darkness is really making things difficult, but thankfully Brendan can tap his Birds of Paradise for a blue to help cast Sire of Stagnation. He gets some revenge in by hitting Derek for 3 with his commander, and gains 3 life. Derek plays a mountain that taps like a swamp, and he pays 1 black for a Scheming Symmetry, letting me also tutor for a card. We each find 1 and put it on top of our libraries. Derek then casts Read the Bones, losing two life, scrying his top two, and drawing two cards. He also realizes that he should have exiled the top four because the trigger from the Sire is double thanks to Yurik, and he passes. I lose two to Mogus on my upkeep and cast Sol Ring in my main phase. I then pay three for a Sword of Light and Shadow, and I slap that bad boy into Misform and deal six commander damage to Mark, gaining three life from the Sword Trigger 
but unable to return a creature from the second half of the ability because I don't have one in my graveyard. Mark loses 2 to Mogus, and then another 3 for the cumulative upkeep cost of Infernal Darkness, paying for the mana cost with his life. He then swings the Grey Merchant at Brendan and Kyrick at Derek, dealing 4 damage and gaining 4 life, and Brendan blocks the Grey Merchant. Mark then plays a Mortuary Mire, and with the trigger going off, exiles his top 4 cards while Brendan draws 4, and then puts the Grey Merchant on top of his library. He then pays 5 colorless, along with 4 life, for a Torment of Hailfire where X is 5, giving Kyrick another counter. We then resolve the spell, and I discard 4 cards, taking 3, while Derek discards 1 card and takes 12. Brendan discards 3 cards and takes 6. Brendan loses 2 to Mogus on his upkeep, and plays an island. He then taps the birds and 4 mana for a Peregrine Drake, who enters and has Brendan tapping his other lands to float some black mana before untapping almost all of his lands. Using some of that floating, he plays a Chromatic Lantern, which will help his color woes, and he then plays a Panharmonicon, which, when working with Yerik, actually has creatures and stuff entering three times. We test this theory with a Farhaven Elf, as Brendan goes to find three basics. Moving to combat, Brendan then swings the Sire and Yerik at Mark, and the creatures connect, with Brendan gaining three life. Derek plays a Swamp and deals with a board by casting a 4 mana costing Damnation. I lose 2 life to Mogus and play Thada Adele before the table quickly reminds me that everything is Swamps and awful and I hate this game. Mark loses 2 life to Mogus as well, and then another 2 life as he pays for the cumulative upkeep cost of Infernal Darkness. He draws the Grey Merchant of Ashfidel that he'd put on top earlier, and he passes turn. Brendan also loses two, and drops a Conjurer's Closet before resolving a Muldrifter. He draws four cards as it enters, but doesn't find a land. Moving to his end step, he flickers the Muldrifter with the Closet trigger, and draws another four as it enters immediately. He then moves to his cleanup step, and has to discard down to seven. Derek plays a Polluted Bonds because, you know, losing even more life for just playing Magic is great and everyone loves it. I lose 2 to Mogus, draw, and pass turn. Mark loses 2 life to Mogus as well, and lets the darkness finally go. He then pays 6 colorless mana, and 6 life for 3 Phyrexian mana to recast his commander, and Kyrick joins the battle once more. Brendan also loses 2 life, and recasts Yerik in his main phase. He then plays a Lotus Cobra, and then drops Misty Rainforest, which has him getting drained by the Polluted Delta for two. He does gain two floating mana from the Cobra though, and Brandon then sacrifices the Misty, losing one, and then gets drained again for two from the Bond, while gaining two more floating mana. This gives him enough mana once he taps a few lands for Casualties of War. He targets Crix, the Bond, my Sword, and Smoldering Marsh. These all then get destroyed, and he passes through his phases, flickering the Muldrifter, and this time drawing 6 as it re-enters, and then discards down to 7. Derek plays Angrath, the Flame Chained, upticking the Planeswalker to have all of his opponents discard a card, and then lose 2 life. He passes. I lose 2 to Mogus, as if there's another choice, and finally cast that Adele. I pass to Mark. Mark loses 2 as well, and cast Nightmare and Making, choosing to exile each creature with power less than the number of cards he has in his hand, which at this point is 5. I preemptively put Thad into exile, but Brendan saves the day, kind of, with a force of negation, exiling a blue card from his hand to counter the spell. Mark then passes. Brendan loses 2 life to Mogus on his upkeep, and he announces he thinks he has a win. He casts Treachery to steal Thada Adele, but the real purpose is to get the 5 lands untapped twice from Yurik's trigger. He floats some mana, and untaps his lands. Using that floating mana and a land, he's able to play his Endercar's Royal. He then follows up with a Risen Reef, who triggers 3 times upon entering. He reveals a land, gaining 2 Lotus Cobra triggers, and gets 2 triggers from the Zendikar's Royal to make 2 elementals. Those elementals then trigger the Risen Reef six times as they enter, meaning he still has eight reveals to go. 
Basically at this point, he's very unlikely not to hit a land, and continues to accrue more elementals and more triggers from the Risen Reef, not to mention gaining more and more mana from the Lotus Cobra as he's revealing and drawing off the top. He's able to stop since it's a May trigger, and he does this until he has no cards left in his library. He then has more than enough mana to cast Jace Wilder of Mysteries, and he upticks his walker to draw a card that he can't do, and he wins. Game review time. So, do you know what's even more frustrating than playing against Blood Moon? Playing against a card that's like Blood Moon, only doesn't just hit your non-basics, aka Contamination and Infernal Darkness. I actually have very few problems with any of these cards, and they're really a good an- and they're a really good answer to catching your opponents with their pants down and basically locking them out of the game while you're able to move forward. Unfortunately for Mark, he wasn't able to do that fast enough, and once Brendan started resolving things that allowed him to tap his lands for whatever he needed, he really pulled ahead while keeping Derek and myself locked behind the mana problems and unable to contribute or help stop him. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.